Hello and greetings. Hello to all my stamping friends today. This is Patty Bennett and today we are going to be looking at these beautiful blended backgrounds. We are using Stampin' Up ink pads and blending brushes. I have lots of tips for you today and I love these stunning cards that are just they're very simple but I think they kind of pack a wow. I really love them. I'm going to show you also how I used the Stampin' Up! color wheel. We'll talk about that a little bit, but I'll show you how that helped me to get my color combinations. And if you are watching live, you should see the little red live button. It should be right about up there in the corner. And that would be on Facebook on Friday, April 5th, 11 a.m. Pacific time. So if you are watching later than that, or you're watching on YouTube or my blog, it is a replay. But I would encourage you to say hello and let me know that you're here, whether you're watching live or the replay because I go back and I look at the comments and I try to answer questions and um, keep engaged with you that way. So let's give everybody just a moment to find the live and then we will get started. So if you're watching a replay, please skip ahead for a minute so that you will just come in on all the good, all the goodies, all the card making goodies. <laughs> Say, hey, I see Randy and Colleen and Joan and Susan, it says, and 15 other people. So I don't know who the other 15 are. They haven't said hi yet, but hello to everyone who is watching live. Hi, Kathy in Washington. Oh, we have a couple of Washington in Idaho, Michigan, Hello, everybody. So happy that you are here. Hey, Tracy, haven't seen you on here for a while. Welcome. Oh, Jane is watching from Maine. Jane, we are probably about as far apart as you can get in the continental U.S. <laughs> and Nancy, she is just across the bay from me in San Rafael, California. So hello. And Robin in Monterey Bay. That's close to me as well. We will go ahead and just, <laughs> Mary says, hello, hello, hello. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. We'll go ahead and get started. So let me just reintroduce myself. This is Patty Bennett. I am an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I blog or have a website, whatever you'd like to say, at pattystamps.com. There are over 6,000 posts for you there over the years. So lots of inspiration color combinations, tips, videos, you name it, lots of things that you can find on my blog. The pictures of these cards will be on my blog on Saturday, April 6th, but the supplies are already listed there today. So if when we get done, if you see something and you're thinking, I really want that, I want to order that, I don't have a demonstrator, I'd love to order, then hop on over to pattystamps.com when we're done and you will see all of the supplies I'm using today. Some of the things I'm using today are from this new 2024-2025 annual catalog. So it is only available right now to demonstrators on a pre-order and then it will be available to customers on May 1st. So a few more weeks for customers. Now if you want to get things early, you are welcome to join my team. There's a link at pattystamps.com at the top that says join my team or more information. I'd be happy to chat with you about that. Um, maybe you are already a demonstrator and you've purchased some of these new things. So lots of possibilities, right? <laughs> I can't open this new catalog yet, but in the back, there is a color wheel. We talked about this, I think, last week or two weeks ago. And this is most of the Stampin' Up! colors. It doesn't include these neutrals, but what I would consider a color <laughs> is represented on this wheel. And I'm going to show you today how I used this wheel to come up with some of these combinations. This was a gift to us 
for those of us who attended an on-stage event in March. I went to the one in Houston, and this was a gift. However, you can still see the colors inside the catalog in the wheel form. You just won't have these little windows. But I'll explain to you how you could adapt and still figure out how to use this in this way if you don't have that wheel. Let me just check. Uh, oh, hello, Shannon and Elaine and Sue, Kelly, Hope, Mary. Oh, my goodness. So many people jumped on. Hello, greetings. Thank you for joining. Oh, Johanna is in England. Oh, my goodness. Ah, oh, shopping in Bath. We went to Bath last May. It is such a beautiful town. I had been there when I was 16, and it was not at all what I remembered. So, I don't know. Maybe, you know, the last 50 years... Um, changed my perspective on things, but it is such a beautiful town. Hi, Annie in the Pacific North, Northwest. Glenda is joining from Kansas. Hi, Jenny. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Well, thank you all for being here. So today we are using the Magnolia Mood stamp set. You can see I've stamped with these two Magnolia flower images on these two cards. And just because, you know, I love roses, you know me, right? I had to use the stippled rose set as well. So I used that on this one. But no matter what you stamp on these backgrounds, it really doesn't matter what you stamp. But it's the background technique that I want to teach you today and give you some tips. And then you can look in your stash and see what sort of image you have that you might want to stamp on top. And so in my blog post tomorrow, if you go there and you look for the um, still photos of all of these cards, I mentioned that it took every ounce in me not to get out my blends and finish coloring in these images because you know me, I love to color, I love flowers, I love to color in the flowers. But that's not the point of this design. So this design is something that I did years and years ago where I did a just a swatch of color down the side of my background and then I stamped an image on top and I just left it. And really it takes every ounce of restraint that I have to not finish coloring it in. But that's just the design and it's just something a little different. So... There you go. If you want to color in, you can color in. But I think you'll really enjoy this idea. And I hope that you'll try it. I think it's really a fun idea. So let's get going with some color blending, ink blending, so that you can see what I did. Almost gave you a sneak peek on my grid paper here. So I'm going to tear that off. <laughs> I'm not going to show you that sneak peek. <laughs> so you will need something to protect your work surface. I just have the little mini uh, grid sheet here. And then I have my quarter sheet. I don't know if, yeah, I already trimmed this down to the four by five and a quarter, but it doesn't matter because you could trim it later. And what you're going to want to do is to block off some space on the left and some space on the right. Now, if I could have found my post-it tape that I liked for this um, technique, I would be using it, but I can't find it, and I don't know where it is. So I had these larger size post-it notes. I think these are about four by six. Yeah, four by six. Now, this color for me is a little dark. If I write on it, it's a little hard for me to read. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to use up this tablet and I'm going to use it for masking off the, um, the sides. So there you go. That's, it's a choice. You can, you can use whatever you want. You can use masking paper. You can use post-it notes. You can use post-it tape, whatever works for you. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up the left side here with one of the grids. And then I'm going to go in three squares, which would be three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to line up the bottom and the top. And I'm just going to press down my sticky note. 
And then what I ended up liking the most was an inch and a half. So that would be six squares on the Stampin' Up! grid paper. And this way, it's a really easy way to line up and make sure that you have an even, I can see I've got this tiny, tiny bit, bit crooked. It'll make sure that you have an even area that you're going to ink blend down the center, okay? Now, how did I choose colors? So this is where the color, um, oh, Mary, let me just answer your question real quick. She wants to know if the Easter Lily dyes came in yet. No, they went straight to the retired discontinued list. They never came back. Even though Stampin' Up! told us they were coming back, they are not coming back. So I'm sorry about that. Anyway, sorry, back to this. So with this color wheel that they gave us when we attended the Stampin' Up! onstage event, one of the things you can do is use these little openings to spin around the wheel and you can find a grouping of colors that looks great together. So depending on how many colors you want, if you want four colors or five colors or six colors or three colors, you can just sort of turn this wheel and you can look and you can see what colors they suggest that might look good together. And that's sort of how I came up with the color combos. So here is the one that I call the pinkish purplish. And I used sort of some colors in this range here and pulled out three colors. Petunia Pop is a new in color. Pretty in Pink is a new in color, but we've had Pretty in Pink before, so it's not exactly a brand new color. And then Bubble Bath, you know, we've had. And so I tried them out. I liked how they blended, so I went ahead and did it on the background of a card for the Magnolia stamp. The next one, my second one, was the yellows. And that one... So I kind of looked over here in this range is Lemon Lolly Peach Pie, which is a new color, and Daffodil Delight. And I decided to put the peach in the middle, as you can see, so that it would be more of a contrast, like light to dark to medium instead of light, medium, dark. But you can arrange colors however you'd like. Totally up to you. And then, because if you know me, I had to have some patty colors happening here, I did some colors over in this range, and I did Petal Pink, which actually surprised me at how orange it looks. Uh, petal Pink, I mean, it is on the orangish side, but wow, that surprised me how beautiful it looks with Flirty Flamingo and then Poppy Parade for the pop of color at the bottom. These will be on my blog tomorrow. Let me just lay them out just in case. Maybe you want to take a screenshot real quick. You are welcome to, but they will be on pattystamps.com tomorrow with these cards. So I'll just leave those there for a minute if you wanted to look at them or take a screenshot. Uh, Lori is asking if demonstrators will be able to purchase the color wheel. I honestly don't know. I think it was really a perk for attending the event, but they may make it available. I honestly don't know. I have not heard yes or no. Hello, Christine, 5 a.m. in Sydney, Australia. My goodness, that is some dedication to be up watching me that early. I don't even get up till 5.30. <laughs> Okay, so there you go. Those are the colors. And let's just start, um, shall we do the, the pink one? Let's start with that one. I'll leave it here so that you can see it. My, sorry, my fingers are so cold today. It's cold in my house. I did turn on the heat for a while, and then I turned it off, put on a jacket, took it off. You know, do, do any of you do that? Honestly, I don't know why why that happens, but it does. Anyway, okay. Pretty in pink, bubble bath at the top, petunia pop at the bottom. Those, That's the order I'm going to go in. Hang on, let me just pull all of this down a little bit. 
just looking so that I'm going to make sure that you can see what's happening. There we go. That's better. And I used a, a tip that I saw Sarah Douglas use. She, you know, is the um, CEO of Stampin' Up. She leaves part of her lid open so that as she is using a blending brush, she can put her blending brush right there. I really liked that tip. And it helps so that your a blending brush doesn't like fall over or land on your project or land somewhere that you don't want it to be. And I just loved that tip. So that's what I've been doing. Isn't that fabulous? And then you've got the right brush with the right um, color. And while I'm going to start blending, I'll just answer a question that I get asked every single time. So I'm adding ink to the brush. This is my bubble bath. Adding ink, I'm going to start swirling on my scrap paper and then come on to the white. Okay, so as I do this and I just keep building up color, I'm just going to say that yes, I have a blending brush for every color, and but you don't have to. If you want to have a brush for pinks, a brush for greens, a brush for blues, a brush for purples, you can do that. And you can simply just kind of rub like this, rub the color off in between colors. That's totally fine. But I started that way when we first introduced blending brushes. And then I decided after a while, you know what, I just want one for every color. I don't want to take time to wash them and wait for them to dry. I just want to keep using um, any color that I want to use. So that's what I do, but you don't have to. I, I don't want you to think that you have to invest in 50 brushes. So here we go. I've built up the color. I'm very careful every single time to start on the scratch paper so that if there's some kind of a blob, and you'll see that when we get to the petunia pop where it's darker and it's a new pad, but start here and just very lightly go across, go back and forth, keep going in circles. I'm not pushing hard. And you'll see we have a beautiful, beautiful blended even bubble bath area. So now I'm going to go to our Pretty in Pink, which is going to be available as a, an in color. It's in the new catalog. Demonstrators have been able to order it already. Customers will be able to order it May 1st. And it's a beautiful blend with bubble bath. It's a gorgeous complement to bubble bath. Oh, my tummy's growling. I guess I'm hungry. I was just talking to a friend about this the other day, that it's that internal clock where all of a sudden your tummy and your brain say, mm, might be time for food. <laughs> okay. And this being a darker color doesn't use, excuse me, doesn't need as many coats to build up the color because it's a darker color. So I've blended a little bit up into the bubble bath a little bit. So now we'll go to our darkest color, which is Petunia Pop. And I just want you to see, when I tap it here, do you see how dark that is? And if I were to have gone straight onto my white cardstock, oh my goodness, that would have been a huge blob and I never would have been able to get it off. So that's why you always start over here and then you bring your brush on to what you want to have blended. And you just keep blending. I'm going up into that pretty and pink just a little bit to create a really beautiful rosy color. Okay. And I'm, since, th since this is not a post-it tape, you know, I told you in the beginning I couldn't find mine. You can see what I'm doing is I'm holding it down so that it doesn't move. It's not ideal. I wish I knew what happened to my post-it tape. But since I can't find it, I'm making do. So, oops, 
Now I'm going to start over here from the left. And I'm sorry if I still sound a little sniffly. I am still trying to get over this, whatever this thing was that I brought home from Bakersfield from the memorial service. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the top. I want that bubble bath to be a little bit richer. It's such a light color that if you want it to be a little richer, it's going to take two or three different coats of color. And out of the corner of my eye, I can see a whole bunch of comments going by. So I'm going to pause in just a minute and look at your comments. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to keep my rhythm going here. Okay, I'm going to let this sit a second while I look at your comments. Let's see. Um, is Stampin' Up! ever going back to the old ink pads? I will not buy the new ones because I can't open them. So let me, I don't know who posted that. It looks like Sue somebody. Let me give you a tip on the um the ink pads so i do agree that they are a little bit hard to open when they're new so this is a new one peach pie so the first time you open them here's what i'm going to suggest take a little birthday candle and rub it in this track and in this track and then slide it back and forth several times like 20 times okay it's going to help loosen it up and then you're going to find that when you open it it's just going to work a lot smoother so that's just a tip for you with when our pads are new and um i do sympathize if you find them difficult to use like you know the older i get the more pain i have here i have so much pain in my hands and my thumbs i understand that it can be difficult, but please let Stampin' Up! know if you would like to see a different style of pad. Um, they won't know unless you let them know, but I don't have any information on that. Um, so Kathy was saying, do I wash them? I'm sure you mean the brushes. No, I do not wash them because uh, two reasons. I've shared this on most of my blending video tutorials. Two reasons. Number one, if I wash this, I have to wait a long time for it to dry. It's so dense, this takes hours to dry. I don't have hours. I want to move on to my next color immediately. And the second reason is, the more ink you build up on these, the better they blend. So you really want an ink buildup. I mean, you do want did I say that right? You do want the ink to build up and you want to keep using it with that ink on there because it will give you a much better blend as you work on your projects. Um, let's see. Hang on. I'm just checking if there were any other questions. What is the similar color to Petunia Pop? Um, Fresh Freesia. Sorry for my reach. I'll just put these together here so you can see them together. So it's a beautiful complement to Fresh Freesia. Um, oh, good, Jenny. I'm glad you like the birthday candle tip. Chapstick works. Thank you, Connie. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's a great idea. Yes, Joanna, I do have some of that blue painter's tape, but I didn't want it to rip my paper. I wasn't sure. If it would so I just you know worked with my post-it notes um, let's see Patty says she finds that the newer ink pads are easier to open than when they first came out that's good to know I wonder if they changed something a little bit and let's see Lisa oh yes and the little spots work great as well so one thing Excuse my reach again. Sorry, I'm just going to put that away. One thing, um, and I've, I've heard this as well, you can push down on this side and it kind of helps release a little bit, it helps that pad to open a little easier. 
Okay, I think I'm happy. We're going to go back to the card. I think I'm happy with this. So here's what I love. I absolutely love taking this off. Isn't that so pretty? Oh my gosh. Love, love, love. I just love seeing the reveal. Isn't it gorgeous? Look how pretty that is. And if that color combination isn't to your liking, use three colors that you love together. It would have been beautiful to add fresh freesia to this, but I didn't want like three of the same shade. I really wanted some difference in color. So that's why I chose these. So again, that was Bubble Bath Pretty in Pink and Petunia Pop. So then, let me just put these brushes and ink pads away before we stamp stamp the magnolia. And I was going to say something, and it completely went out of my brain. Oh my gosh, does that happen to everybody else, or is it me? Oh, I'm glad you like it, Stacy. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Um, Johanna says you can stick the blue. Oh, yes. The blue tape I could have, you're right, like stuck it onto my pant leg or my sleeve to take some of the tack off of there. You're right. I could have done that. And I didn't think of that tip. So thank you for that reminder. Okay, so on Magnolia, I used the large image and the small image and the birthday image. And the large one fits on, what is this? The E block. And what I did was I kind of laid it on here first just to sort of see how I was going to want to uh, stamp it. And this smaller one I thought would kind of nestle nicely right there. And then happy birthday, you can see that on this card, I have it across the top, but I stamped it last and I wish I would have stamped it first and moved the flower down just a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to stamp happy birthday first and it's just memento black ink. You could use a color if you wish or any other black ink that you want. And, sorry, I have to stand up and look through my phone. That's really hard. I'll try and get it straight. If it's not straight, forgive me because that's really hard to stamp looking through your phone. Whoa, I think I did it. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> Woo, that was nice. And then this magnolia, I'm going to stamp it down just a little bit more than I did on the original one. Just a little bit, just like right, right about there. Um, yes, Mary is asking if I have labels to share for the blending brushes. Yes, my labels I posted on my blog a year ago when I posted the rainbow order. Um, so you, I can, I can try and get that to you. The easiest way to find that, Mary, is go to my blog, pattystamps.com. And at the top, there is a link that says my craft room. And at that link on that page, you will find... Um, all the posts that I have of all my craft room organization, all the tips, all the, you know, all the good things. And you will find one that says rainbow order for ink pads. And that post has the, um, the label file. Now, of course, that label file is for the 50 colors that are happening right now. I have not updated it with the five new colors. So I will get to that. It's just going to take me a little time. But to get you going, you can always use that file. Um, let me see. Will Stampin' Up! come out with a tool like the Misty? Um, I don't know, Shannon. We had one and it was discontinued. So I don't know anything further about that. All right. Thank you, Mary. I'm glad you like the tips, Esther.
So then I wanted to keep this super, super simple. And you can see that all I did was I added it to a Petunia Pop card base. No extra layering. And trust me, this took so much restraint because I love to add embellishments. I love to add um, speckles, wink of Stella, like you name it, right? It's hard for me to not add a bunch of things, but, but I didn't. And I'm going to use my foam adhesive sheets. And rather than take a whole big piece like this and slap it on the back, which makes the card very, very rigid. What I like to do is I will cut a whole piece into strips. And on the back, I will put three strips. I start at one side. I put a strip on the other side. You know me, foam sheets. Love my foam sheets, right? I put one in the middle and then I put a piece across the bottom. So we'll trim it about there. And that way it doesn't make the card quite so stiff and rigid. And I don't know, it, it feels like there's cardboard in it or something. If you just put a huge piece on there. So this, that's how I do it. And let me stand up and look straight down. Okay. And that's it. And it's hard for me to leave it. <laughs> so I'll tell you what I did to, um, because just leaving it alone seemed really hard. Okay. So I decided, well, you have to put something on the inside. So I cleaned my stamp. And then I used Petunia Pop and I stamped, I think I stamped off first. Wait. Mm, I don't know if I did or not, but I'm going to lightly stamp off and then I'm going to just stamp in the corner. Beautiful. And then I decorated the envelope flap. You know how it's fun to put designer paper on an envelope flap? But I thought, well, this is cheaper. And it's quite lovely. And it makes the whole thing really go together nicely. It doesn't add any bulk, doesn't add any weight. So there we have the envelope flap. And we have the insert and there you go then you have just such a lovely card to send to somebody for their birthday so that is the purples and well the pink pinky purples and then I don't know you probably don't need to see me do the other two. I'm happy to do them if you want, but it's the same idea. Um, do you want to see this again or does everybody kind of get it? I don't want to belabor the point. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad you all like them. Thank you so much. So let me know. Do you want me to do another one or, or are, excuse me, or are you good? I don't know why I couldn't get that out. While you're commenting, I want to show you this. I need to take it out of the plastic though. Hang on. This is a card with the Magnolia Mood um, dies. And I didn't use the dies, you see. I just used the stamps today. But I got this from Deb Peterson at the um, Houston on stage event and she made her own alcohol ink background and used the Magnolia Mood dye on top. Oh my goodness. I think this was my most favorite card that I received from anybody 
that week and it's just gorgeous and I wanted to show it to you because I did go ahead and link on my blog post the whole bundle in case you wanted to see what the dies look like. I just wanted to show you that card. I mean, it's just stunning. So pretty. So very pretty. Um, Let's see. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jenny. Oh, once is enough. Okay, fabulous. All right, so you get the idea. Um, Oh, Tila says she missed the first one. She'd like to see it again. Let me see. Does anybody else want to see it or... Um, can you use the embossing folder? Sherry, what, which embossing folder? Oh, Janet, I'm glad you like the envelope flap idea. So let me just bring back all three. It sounds like you guys are pretty good. If you missed the blending tips, I would just encourage you then to watch the replay because... Um, I don't want to belabor this whole idea here. <laughs> I think these are just gorgeous. And like I said, whatever stamp you might have that you think would look great on top of this blended background, you go ahead and use what you have. I just decided to give the magnolia and the stippled rose a try. And, oh, Kathy, I have the, the uh, blah, 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 sorry. I have the alcohol ink technique on my YouTube channel. You can go to my YouTube channel at Patty Stamps and type in alcohol ink and you will find that um, video. Good. Nancy's going to go try this. Oh, the hybrid hello. Yes, I have I have a whole video on that. If you haven't seen that, I have a whole video showing you how to use that hybrid embossing folder. Again, you can go to my uh, YouTube channel, Patty Stamps or Patty Bennett, and type in, um, I can't think what it's called now. Is it Thoughtful Expressions, I think? And you can see that whole video. Uh, Petal Pink, Flamingo, and Poppy. Good, I'm glad you like that one. Awesome, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, again, if you missed the beginning, feel free to find these cards and supplies at pattystamps.com. The supplies are on there today, Friday, April 5th. The cards will all be on there Saturday the 6th. And you can um, check out all of the still photos. You can pin them. You can pin the color combinations, whatever works for you. I'm glad you all like this. Thank you. I hope you have fun trying this and I will see you next week, everybody. Have a fabulous weekend. Bye-bye.